Okay, so today what we're gonna do is we're going to install and set up a new Linux machine. And uh, this, I'm doing this because I got uh, the comment from uh, Adrian Dolvara on my last community post. Uh, basically just saying that he would like to see a video of me uh, setting up a new, a new Linux machine for development. So I figured I would do that in this video. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check to see uh, which Linux distro I have on my little USB stick on my key chain. All right, so now I'm gonna plug this in. All right, so it looks like we have Ubuntu installed, but it is the 20.04 version, which I think now there's like a, I think there's a 21 version, maybe even 22, I'm not sure. Okay, so now I've downloaded Bellina Etcher, which is the burner software thing that I use to actually put the uh, Linux distro onto a USB stick. So now we're just gonna install this. And then we get the actual tool up here. And now we're just gonna select the file, which is the Ubuntu 22.04. So we're gonna open, uh, select target, which is gonna be the USB flash drive, which I put into the desk, to the laptop there. Select, and then flash. All right, so now the flash is done. That means that we have uh, Ubuntu on the flash drive, which is really good. Now we can just turn the laptop off and then turn it back on and press whatever. I'm actually gonna Google which button I need to press because I know, because you need to press some sort of combination or single button uh, in order to actually enter into the BIOS or BIOS, I don't know how, how you say it, but. All right, so now we have Ubuntu running and now we have two different options and I've already tried it. I know I want it. So I'm gonna press install Ubuntu. Okay, so what I usually do is I actually partition it so that I have a little bit of Windows and then also a little bit of uh, Linux. So therefore I'm gonna select the something else option and then press continue. Yeah, now we get to choose how we're gonna partition it. All right, so I've tried to Google how this is done and it seems like we need to actually delete uh, one of the partitions. And then once we've deleted that, we need to create a couple more partitions so that we can then install it. So as you can see here, we have, this is like one terabyte of storage and uh, I'm just gonna press the minus thing here and that should then delete it. Yeah, so now we have this thing which just says free space. And what we can do then I think is press plus. All right, so we're gonna start with the root which we're gonna give 30 gigabytes. I'm just basically following an article here that I'll link in the description in case you wanna check it out. And then we'll choose this one which is the root. Great. Now we need to create the swap. Apparently the swap should be double the RAM size, which means that we need to give this 32 gigabytes. Here, 32. It should be swap area. All right, now the final thing that we need to do is create the home space. Let's give this 742 gigabytes of memory or storage and then we'll give this to home. I'm not entirely sure of this. 
All right, that seems like it should be right. Let's restart. All right, so now we have Ubuntu installed, uh, which was a very smooth process actually, uh, which is good. And that's been my experience in the past actually with the Samsung laptop. Um, and now we're gonna actually install the dev specific stuff like the Android Studio, set up GitHub and do all those sort of things that I will do to have my laptop actually be ready for development properly. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Android Studio. So it says that to launch Android Studio, open up a terminal, navigate to Android Studio bin directory and execute the studio.sh. And I don't know how to execute an sh file. All right, so let's see if we can install uh, Visual Studio Code. This should do it. Install uh, dash dash classic code. Code dot, does that? Yeah, so that seems to have installed properly. So now we have Visual Studio Code. Now the next thing is to install Flutter. And in case you're wondering, no, I don't know all this stuff uh, by heart. I just Google it and then I go through the tutorials or the documentation for how to do the different things. So copy that command, paste it in here. sudo snap install flutter classic. Okay, now we can test it. Flutter doctor. And while we're waiting for Flutter to finish installing, I could mention today's video sponsor, which is Brilliant. And I really like having Brilliant as a sponsor for the channel. And they've been a sponsor for the channel now for a really long time. I think it's been like two years of them uh, supporting me and uh, giving you guys really good uh, discounts and that sort of stuff. And I really appreciate that because I really like having high quality sponsors and Brilliant is one of those that I really think is high quality. And they have a course called Programming with Python and this is the course that I would recommend that you check out. And if you use the link in my description, you get a seven day free trial of Brilliant Premium. So you can check out their course completely free. And I think their course overall is just a really great way to start, especially if you're a visual learner because their courses are really visual and hands-on. And I really can't recommend Brilliant enough. And I think they're a great place, especially if you're interested in learning about computer science, whether it is learning how to code or whether you want to dive deeper into algorithm fundamentals or something like neural networks. And so yeah, right now you actually get a seven day free trial of Brilliant Premium if you use the link in my description. And you also get a 20% discount on an entire year of Brilliant Premium. So go check that out at the link in the video description. And now we're gonna get back to the actual video. And now we have Flutter installed. The next thing is gonna be to set up Git and GitHub so that I actually have, so I can get all of my repositories down to my computer and like start working on things with this computer properly. First thing that we'll do is we'll just type in uh, sudo, sudo apt, install git and that will install git on the computer and then once git is actually installed then we can actually set up the ssh key so that we have a connection for from my laptop to github so that i can then uh, just get all my repositories from github i forget what all this stuff is called now but that's what we need to have. So I'm gonna set that up now. Thank you. 
And now I'm just going to test to see that I've actually installed it properly. So I'm just going to make a tiny change so that we can see that I can actually do stuff here. So I'm just going to add a another colon here. Perfect. Then I'm going to save it. And then we're going to check out what the status is. Okay, perfect. Git and dot commit and test this. All right, perfect. Now we have git installed and set up properly. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change a little bit of what the terminal looks like. And I did that in a video like six months ago on my last laptop. And uh, I really like how that turned out. So I'm going to try to just essentially just copy what I did on that in that video. If you want to see how I actually did that, you can watch that video. And I'll link that in some way. It's called terminal the video is called Terminal Customizations. Actually, since I'm not really known to remember to link these things in the description or in other ways, uh, I'm just going to tell you what the name of the video was. Uh, the video was called Terminal Customization. So if you want to see how I did or managed to customize the terminal to look the way that it's about to look, then uh, you can watch that video. All right, <clears throat> all right, so as per usual, that last thing just took me ages to do. Uh, but now I have it set up, so now I have uh, my custom terminal. And that means that the entire laptop is essentially ready for development. Uh, Python is usually already installed when you uh, start Linux up. It usually comes with Ubuntu. So I don't tend to need to do many things with that. And I also try to install the packages and stuff like that that I need as I need them. So I don't want to install a bunch of stuff uh, before I actually need it. And sometimes I'll realize uh, after a while that I need certain things. So yeah, uh, I hope this was kind of interesting to see me show what I do for the setup. I don't know how long this video will be. Hopefully it won't be too long. Uh, but yeah, hope you found it interesting and next week I'm going to get back to the startup and do another video on, uh, what the status is with that and, uh, why I haven't said anything about it for a while. So tune in then. See you next week.